Welcome back everyone. And in today's video, we are going to look at a very important question. Does dissonance belong in music? Now, I've been a music teacher for a long time, and this is an interesting question. It tends to really trick some people, and so we want to really pay attention to this question. So what we're going to do is analyze a chord, and the chord that we're going to look at here is C major 7th chord. The way that we build that chord, we haven't talked about this yet, but that's going to be C, E, G, and B. Those are the notes that are in the chord. And what I'd like to do is just do a little analysis here. Let's take a look. I know that from C to E, there's an interval there, and there's an interval from E to G. There's an interval here that occurs from G to B. We also have another interval. How about E to B? And we have C to G. And finally, we have C to B. Now, let's go ahead and label all these. And so we'll have, this is our first interval, our second interval, our third interval. This is our fourth, our fifth, and our sixth interval. And now what we want to do is really think about the consonance levels. And regarding our previous video, we kind of went over that. Well, C to E is a major third, so we're going to say that that is very consonant. E to G is a minor third, so that's mildly consonant. G to B is a major third, so we're going to say that's very consonant. C to G is very consonant. It's a perfect fifth. And C to B is a major 7, and we said that that was very dissonant. So now, let's kind of consider, well, if something is very consonant, we're going to really just call, pretty much that's going to be somewhere between, let's say, 80% to 100% consonants. And if something is mildly consonant, it's going to be, you know, obviously like 0.79 or so and less. And if something is very dissonant, we're going to say that it has about 0.1% consonants, okay? So it's D is gonna be equal to 0.10C. Now the way that I would analyze this at this point is we're going to do some math. And so let's look at what we wanna think of is we have one sixth, because there's six different intervals, times the consonants of interval one, right? So the consonants of interval one. So we're gonna say one sixth C1, plus one-sixth C2, plus one-sixth C3, plus one-sixth C4, plus one-sixth C5, plus one-sixth C6, okay? Where C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, those represent the different intervals. Now, moving on, let's consider what those are. Well, that would give us one-sixth times, well, what is C1? C1 is going to be this interval, and that's a capital C. That's going to be just 1 because that's very consonant. And then we add 1 sixth times C2, and C2 is right here, E to G. And we're going to say that that's somewhere about 80% consonant. Okay, And if we do 1 sixth times C3, C3 is here, which is another major third. So we're going to call that 100% consonant. And we're going to do 1 sixth times C4, and C4 is right here, which is a perfect fifth. That's another 100% consonants. Plus 1 sixth times C5. C5 is going to be right here from C to G, which is another 100% consonants because it's a perfect fifth. Plus 1 sixth times C6. And C6 is right here, and that is the one that's very dissonant, and we're going to say that that's 0.1 consonants. Now, if you were to analyze this whole thing, what you'd find out is that this is going to give you approximately 78% consonants. Now, this is a very fluid number, okay? So why is it fluid? Well, because, you know, this 80% consonants, this is sort of based on gut and feel, and 10% here, again, based on gut and feel, going off of the scale that we created from our last video. But the idea here is to show you, well, if this is 78% 78% consonants, does it at least give you a feel to understand, well, is this less consonant than a certain chord or more consonant than a certain chord? Does it give you an idea about how to resolve it? Is it very tense? Is it kind of tense? And we can see that this is certainly more consonants than dissonance, right? It's over the 50% line. So it's more consonant than it is dissonance. It. So that's kind of a good thing, but it definitely gives us just a general feel for our scale. So we're not looking for exact numbers. We're just looking to understand the generality here. Now, the purpose of dissonance in general is to create tension, 
right? And so we see this in the C major seven chord where we saw C and B, and that was what was tense. Those two notes don't sound good together. That's the idea. So the dissonance there creates tension and it makes you want to resolve the chord somewhere else. And the other big reason is to manipulate emotions. And that might sound harsh, but that's really the truth. As a musician, your job is to write a love song. And if it's a love song, you want it to be the loviest love song. And if you are writing a sad song, you want it to be the saddest, you know, sad song that you can write. And if you're writing a happy song, you want it to be the happiest happy song that you can write. And that's really what your job is. I mean, who wants to hear, oh, I wrote a happy song, but it's not that happy? Well, then you're not doing your job. Who wants to see a piece of art that, well, I, I didn't really put that much effort into it, right? <laughs> I, if, I, if I'm going to write a song, I want it to be the best of that particular you know, emotion. And that's what we're really looking for. So that's what dissonance does for us. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you've really enjoyed what you've seen so far, please just go ahead and click that subscribe button for me. It'll help keep us going so we can put out more great content for you.